Hello and welcome. I'm back from the doctors. I'm opening a soda. It's three o'clock. It's the 27th day of September 2021. It is a gloomy, spooky October Monday here in Ventura. But for the rest of the world, I hope you are well. And we are about to begin our deep dive into the rabbit hole that is the future of D&D announcements. We went over them earlier today. We made some guesses, reposted. I've gotten a lot of responses to the posts, more than I expected, mostly focusing on two main topics and then the third topic, some of which I addressed earlier today, some of which I didn't really think of until now. So let's go into the future of D&D. But first, we need to give a shout out to these talking heads we see. We see some faces, most of them we don't recognize. So let's just tell you who these people are and why they may or may not matter. So Ellie Osley Wood is a journalist and video gamer, and she is a member of BAFTA of all things and very much proactive in the um, culture of video game as art. So at least she has some idea of what she's talking about. Ray Winnegar, who is one of the three possible suspects of the cameo. Remember, we mentioned that there was supposedly a cameo in the production. Uh, he is the current executive D&D producer. I don't know what that means, but he's the current executive producer of it. We have Liz Shrew. Sure, Shu, S H U H. I assume I'm just going to get these names wrong. Uh, who is wearing the shirt that might be a map, so that also might be our clue. Again, remember they said something about a cameo. And she is the head of publishing for Dungeons and Dragons. Then we have Chris Perkins 2.0. Uh, and of course, we know Chris Perkins has lots of hats that he wears. He's wearing one right now. Uh, DM. Uh, media figurehead, designer, writer, creator, comedian, goofball, um, stalwart. Some positive things you can say about him, some negative things you can say about him. He's been with us for a long time in Wizards of the Coast. And he is the third possible culprit with a clue slash cameo. And then, of course, rounding up, we have lead designer and talking head for, for Wizards of the Coast, Jeremy Crawford, who has an amazing speaking voice, even if he's, you know, not that great of a DM, but oh, his voice, I mean, it's up there and just ASMR. You could just listen to Crawford talk for a while and just be like, oh, you have such a soothing, consistent. Jeremy Crawford has a great radio voice. If you've never heard him speak, just listen to him. He just has an amazing lilt and an amazing tone. He's just, yeah. You know, doesn't matter whether you agree what the guy says or not. It's just he's got a really good radio voice. And speaking of radio voice. So now we know who those people are. And here's what we know so far about the future of D&D. We know that there are three products we are going to see before the end of the year. Witch Light, which we know has caused a whole new uh, bag of kittens of conjecture and eye popping and rethinking and pondering and wondering some of it is spot on other of it is ridiculous i have definitely jumped on the uh witch like conspiracy train or in some of my vlogs uh we have strixhaven or as many of the people are referring to it as dnd prom um we don't know a lot about it yet other than it's based upon a magic the gathering setting and it's about a magic school and other than that we're still not sure what we can expect from it post witch light and the third and final book of course we have coming up before the end of the year unless shipping issues make it otherwise is fizzbin's guide to dragons which the only hint we have so far makes no sense as to how it's going to be organized, because they say it's going to be organized by challenge rating. But what does that mean? Because, like I said in previous videos about this topic, so let's, Red Dragon. Red Dragon has multiple challenge ratings per age. So is it just going to be one page, Red Dragon challenge rating A, second page, Red Dragon challenge rating B, 
third page, Red Dragon Challenge Rating 3? And, or are you going to do Red Red Dragon Challenge Rating A and then all the other dragons that are Challenge Rating A and then cycle back and do the thing again and the next chapter would be Red Dragon Challenge Rating B and then all the other dragons. So what, is that, what does that mean that it's going to be organized by Challenge Rating as opposed to alphabetical? Because then they went... When, then went on and announced that there's going to be a new book, a new monster book, coming out sometime next year. It was supposed to be for the holidays, but again, shipping has delayed that. We have Morda Kanan's Multiversal Guide to Monsters. And unlike Fizzbins, which is going to have the monsters categorized by challenge rating, they have said that Morda Kanan's Multiversal Guide to Mar- Monsters, try saying that five times fast, is going to be alphabetized and not have subcategories. So that goes completely against what they claim we're going to see in Fizzbin's Dragon Book of Dragon. And we're no, we are not going to get an explanation as to how characters from other IPs are now suddenly appearing in the main IP. How did Fizzbin get to the Forgotten Realms? Apparently he's always been there. How did Mordekainen get to the Forgotten Realms from Greyhawk? Apparently he's always been there. How did Warduke and company get to the Forgotten Realms from a toy line and one module? Apparently they've always been there. Don't ask questions, just move along. <clears throat> so we know that Motor Cannon's Master Monster Manual of Multiversalness, notice they're calling it Multiverse and not Other Planes, um, is going to be first part of a book gift set that we're getting in January. This gift set will include Tasha's, the now totally pointless book, Xanthers, and Mordekainen's, who will then, as well as a new DM screen. And that's going to cost probably $100 plus. But it'll be out in January. Then sometime after January, possibly in March, we will see the regular Mordekainen's we have been told that we're going to see at least two other books, maybe three books in 2022, and two or three books in 2023 as we go into 2021 for and the conjecture of what is the 2024 50th anniversary book going to be. And based upon what we know so far as of 3 o'clock today... We don't know. It sounds like the way it's written. And if we're going by the fact that at least one individual, possibly two individuals, are wearing Advanced Dungeons & Dragons t-shirts in this picture, it sounds like what we're getting for the 5th edition is, for the 50th anniversary, is 5.1. Now, we don't know if it's going to be Dungeons & Dragons 5.1, or if it's going to be Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, or what they're going to call it, we do know that there is a clue, supposedly, in this picture of these individuals. There's a cameo regarding one of the upcoming projects. Now, some people have said that the cameo is Ray wearing the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons shirt. Uh, There is a lesser amount of people who say it's the shirt that Liz is wearing, because it kind of looks like a map, but... Maybe it's not a map. Maybe it's just a design. And the third and final is, of course, Chris has behind him a very noticeable sailing ship. And which Dungeons & Dragons classic setting involves sailing ships? Well, of course, other than Maztaca, Planescape with the flying ships of the Spelljammer Planescaping stuff. So that could be a Spelljammer that we see behind him. And it could be a classic you know, thing we haven't really seen yet, and they could just do a combination of Spelljammer, Planescape as one book, which would make a lot of sense. It's what I would do. But all we have is conjecture. We have conjecture that sometime in 2024, for the 50th anniversary, there will be a new basic core set. Will this be 6th edition? Or will this just be Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition? All we know is it's going to be backwards compatible, and they are making changes based upon all the surveys they have posted and what people are saying online and addressing their 
target audience, who's both the current players and the nostalgia players. Now, so far, they have not really addressed the nostalgia players. In fact, they have made a lot of effort to sort of separate the nostalgia players like myself from the current group of people who they think is their target audience. But with Witchlight, it looks like they might be trying to recapture the attention of the nostalgia players first by reintroducing reintroducing alignment something that the more progressive fan base did not want was very for getting rid of alignment but the nostalgia players like myself are like don't get rid of alignment it's a core aspect of dungeons and dragons rewrite it change it make it make more me more relative relevant to the current world but don't get rid of it so they brought alignment back. Now, will alignment stay? Again, don't know. We haven't seen the stat blocks for Strixhaven or um, Fizzbin's Book of Dragons. So this could be a one-off. And going into Strixhaven and Book of Dragons nonsense, there might be no stat blocks with alignment. Or it might remain a constant now. We don't know, which is, of course, a big mystery. We don't know if we're getting a 6th edition or a 5.5 what that means other than a reprinted monster manual reprinted player's handbook and a reprinted dungeon master's guide that is going to include all the changes that they are making based upon the surveys and all the changes they have made since tasha's of course now tasha's being an utterly pointless book because we find out in which light that everything tasha said is a lie which means everything in that book may also be a lie i don't know i mean it's weird alignment is back which is already causing some back wash from their more progressive audience the younger audience who wanted alignment to go away so now we enter the realm of complete conjecture and guessing so i have no factual evidence to go on this is simply conjecture and thought experiments based upon the facts that I have before me as of today. These facts may change going forward. In fact, I'm sure they will. Conjecture. And these are the questions I have been asked. One, why is it so expensive? Because these things are going to be expensive. Just look at them. Two, what does this mean for D&D Beyond? And three, what is Critical Role going to do in response to this? And the fourth one was, what is the rest of the industry going to do in response to that? So in our next vlog, we will address those four questions. I don't want to make this too long. We're already into 13 minutes. So we do have, going forward, information that is non-information that there will be a new revised core rule set backwards compatible which of course means it's totally pointless based upon all the surveys which mean expect a lot of changes so will it be 5.5 or will it be 6 is there any reason for them to make a 6th edition probably not they could just make it five by five especially if it's compact backwards compatible with all the other pre-existing fifth edition stuff we have mordekanen's marvelous Med menagerie of the multiverse coming out in january as part of a utterly pointless box set because most people already have xanthers and tasha's and now tasha's is sort of pointless or you can buy mordekanen's marvelous mystery manual of the multiverse later on and it's going to be at least 50 to 100 bucks we also have two more classic campaign worlds that we're going to see. One of them supposedly might be hinted at in these pictures, which means Spelljammer slash Planescape or something that has to do with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. A lot of people are saying Dark Sun, but of course Wizards of the Coast has said they will never go to Dark Sun, which is po totally pointless because Wizards of the Coast also said they would never revisit Ravenloft. Or it could be Mastaka. Greyhawk, I doubt Greyhawk, Hollow World, Eberron, or something completely new that we've never seen before. Plus, of course, we will continue to see Magic the Gathering books. So, with 
are these new books they're talking about Magic the Gathering books. They said one of them is scary, which means to me probably Innistrad, because that's the Magic the Gathering fear setting, uh, Magic the Gathering's version of Ravenloft. We've already done Ravenloft, so if we wanted to do another scary, frightening world, it would either be something Lovecraftian or Innistrad, which, and we know there's going to be more Magic books. So if we're expecting three books to six books in 2022, and at least two books plus a major book in 2023. And of course, 2024, we have the 50th anniversary. And then we know that at least one of every one of those is going to be a magic book, but we don't know which. So basically, we don't know anything other than there's going to be stuff. It's going to be expensive. It's going to change the game, but maybe not change the game as much as we think they're going to change the game. Everything that happened in the past is totally pointless because they've already gone back on their word once and now they've gone back on their word again, which means there will they go back on their word a third time, which I don't know. Some people say Wizards of the Coast understand their target audience and know exactly what they're doing in regards to trying to recapture the nostalgia. Players like myself, other people like me say, no, just look at this. They actually have no idea what they're doing. This doesn't make any sense. But maybe it does. We ha I have hinted and conjectured before that maybe I'm looking at this completely wrong. And if you look at it from a different point of view, there is a very vague Machiavellian manipulation that runs through all the things. And it could be leading up to the 2024 thing where they pull the rug out from under our feet and go, ha! This is what we were doing all along. Gotcha. And if that was true, wow, that would be amazing. I don't think it's true because I don't think they're that clever. But what if it was? So we have four questions hanging over our head. We will address them in a separate vlog because I've already wasted too much of your time. If you want to go deeper down this rabbit hole, stay, stay tuned for part two of this vlog. If you don't want to go deeper down this rabbit hole, then... Have, find something fun else to do today. Maybe start your Halloween shopping. Uh, if you think I should continue, let me know. If you think I should stop talking about this, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I will see you for part two of the future of Dungeons & Dragons Electric Boogaloo. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Get off my lamps.